In 2014, I started a high altitude balloon program with students uh, because a student asked if something was possible. And ever since then, the best thing about this program has been seeing kids push the limits of what they think is scientifically possible and personally possible. Um, the coolest thing is seeing kids just really push themselves to work with each other, to work within themselves, to problem solve, to troubleshoot problems, and just seeing them really grow and develop. I think that Although I've seen kids do amazing things, some of my greatest victories and some of my students' greatest victories in this are the kids that will eventually um, haven't been sure of themselves the and haven't what felt very now. confident That's how large in science or school in there. general. And as soon as they see that what they're doing is important and that what they're doing has value and that they can make a difference and really impact something that's bigger than them, impacts more than them, and seeing those kids just dive in. And every day on launch day, um, there's this huge amount of stress and pressure and you feel just the weight of it all. And every single time, even though I've launched so many times, um, I feel like it, every day I'm like, gosh, is it gonna actually go up? Are we gonna actually get everything back? And um, there's always just this, this stress that we all feel. And then as soon as we see that thing in the air, it's just all worth it. That, you know, kids did that, students did that, I didn't do that. Um, they all made it happen. And every year that's what makes it worth it. So I just hope that um, this program can continue and that more and more students can get the opportunity to um, just push themselves and question and let that really drive where their experience takes them. The problem was that the GPS wasn't working properly, so we actually weren't able to find the balloon on our own. We had to use uh, assistance from Mrs. Hurst and our teacher, and she had to call the company to get the GPS to work. And once we solved that issue, we knew that we could go forward. And once we had our real launch, the GPS wouldn't be a problem, and we'd be able to actually go find the payload once it landed. Oh my Yo, god! Yo, oh my god! Oh my god. Oh, we that found is it. just so crazy! We found it. It's right there! It's right! Try to be cutting into the payload box. That was so much fun to do with Shay. Hey, wait, the most important part. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lego ballerina pink Batman. The instructions are it has to come back. Okay, seal that. You need to seal this. All right. I'd have to say my favorite part is definitely the process of discovery. In no other class and with no other experiment have I been able to go through, ask a question, and deliver an experiment on that question without there being a predetermined answer that the teacher already knew. From the high altitude balloon launch, I've learned that teamwork is all about the effort that an individual puts in. It can be hard during times of conflict, but communication is what saves the team overall. Because I learned so many new things, such as leadership skills and learning to work with others under difficult circumstances. 
the independence and freedom that we were given to make mistakes and learn from them, as well as collaborate with both classes, was my favorite part. Cover the balloon. And one of the teams has been uh, calculating the trajectory, um, how to calculate the lift based on our overall balloon mass. Um, and um, you can follow the mission live. Uh, we hope you all enjoy, and we should have liftoff here in about 10 minutes or, or under. Thank you guys so much. happened with the first launch is since there was a lot of wind, the pressure monitor uh, gauging how much helium we are supposed to put in the balloon, it gave us a false number. So we let it go and it didn't go anywhere because the buoyancy was equivalent to the normal air pressure. So we had to pull the balloon back down, unsecure the zip ties and electrical tape, and then reinsert the helium tube and fill it back up with more helium so that it could lift off of the ground. Every class period, I was learning something new, whether it was about leadership, problem solving, or just communicating and working in groups in general. Period 3 launch team's frequency experiment tested whether or not altitude has any effect on the frequency and decibel level of sound. While the original hypothesis was that the frequency of sound would decrease as the altitude increases, in reality the decibel level of the sound decreased and the sound got clearer as the altitude increased. about our HAB research was being able to work with so many amazing people and learn so many new things. My 
favorite part of the high altitude ballooning experiment was being able to see it on the launch day go up into the air. Um, knowing how much time and effort and stress that we had in uh, designing the payload box and being able to see the finished product at the end go up into space was a really great experience. since we left and we're still trying to find the payload boxes and the balloon. We have coordinates but it's very hard to see anything in the mountains with all the trees. Um, based on the coordinates like the balloon could be anywhere here and there's sharp bushes and it's not looking good. So we've been trying to find the payload boxes. It's not really working. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, there's um, sharp really bushes. sharp bushes. I got stabbed in the leg. It's very slippery. Um, oh yeah I almost fell like three It's times. kind of hot. I got stabbed. Um, we have like no water. <laughs> yeah. and we're staying optimistic because we do have some coordinates, so we have a rough idea of where it could be. Also, the parachute's a really bright color and the payload boxes are reflective. So if we do get a glimpse of it, we'll know directly where it is. It might not be. <laughs> I don't know. We're kind of bummed because we didn't find it, but the experience was fun. We went hiking for like two and a half hours. And that wasn't expected. So the journey, but. <laughs> Oh, we still we have got to some walk scratches. Back. Yeah. yeah, and it's not yeah. over. We got to walk back. Well, Layla and I literally yeah. hiked up the top. Of What's up, dog? Yeah. We didn't find it. <laughs> but I'm still we smiling. Went. And Becca and I went. I got the machete for whacking some weeds. I got the GPS tracker. I'm going to go get that balloon today. currently walking along this ridge and uh, we are about to recover this balloon. It is about 0.03 miles off of this ridge. You can see where I'm at. So just when we had totally lost hope and multiple GPS failures, I looked up in the bushes and saw that we found it. Here is the balloon pretty mangled in a yucca that has also mangled my legs on the way over here to get it. This payload is totally protected here under this bush. We lost the GPS signal because it is so far underneath this bush, which is pretty amazing because it came from that direction and fell on this side, the non-windward side of, uh, of this plant here. Here we can see the parachute. I saw the orange. It's how I found it. Yeah. Yay. I've been hiking all day. I'm so glad to find this thing. Throughout the high altitude balloon project, I definitely learned a lot about how people can do different tasks seemingly separate, but then come together in the end for a finished product. And the success of our balloon launch just goes to show that by working together, we can accomplish anything. I would just like to say thank you to Ms. Hurst to the administration, to all of the media who came out to support our launch, and just everyone who has put in the effort and the work to help us make this project what it is and just make everything happen. This is not by all, any means a one-person job, and 
it would not, none of this would have happened if, without the support of everyone who has worked with the HAB project for any of the last six years. And I just wanted to say thank you to everyone.